Hello buddy, welcome to this tutorial on normal mapping. So to start with, I'm just going to give you a uh, brief description of what a normal map is. It's essentially a texture map that is going to define how uh, the light reacts with uh, surface normals and that's going to help in order to produce um, a model that's going to look highly detailed even though in actual fact uh, that model is uh, a low poly model. Um, this comes in handy obviously for things like uh, games or even if you've got high poly models already and uh, you need to really have really fine detail. So to start with I have these two meshes and you may notice that uh, it's, it's the mesh from ZBrush here. So I just basically exported that out and then I have a retopologized version here. Now obviously this is not particularly the best because it doesn't have the ears and stuff like that. Um, but you know it's just a really simple easy retopology that's going to allow me to demonstrate um, the, the principle, the concepts and principles for this um, tutorial. So to start with I'm going to select the uh, low poly mesh here. I'm going to add what's called a projection modifier. So we can go down to um, projection here and uh, you see that this uh, yellow cage has appeared and it's going to be this cage that's going to be casting the rays um, in order to um, extract the um, extract the uh, detail from the high poly model. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that this cage uh, encompasses the whole uh, encompasses the whole uh, high poly mesh. So there's two ways we can do that. The first way is we can just use the push and kind of hope to get the uh, right amount here. Um, so we can just push this out a little bit. Now the other thing we can do and uh, I'm showing this just in case you have a more complicated model and you may need the um, the more control over the cage is well actually first of all the second thing you could do is you could click the shaded and then um, move these yourself by uh, clicking vertex or, or faces and so on but I find that uh, a little bit difficult sometimes uh, to see what you're doing so instead what I like to do is I like to click this button that says export and it's going to ask for a name and this name is cage and uh, you can see what's happened there, it's, it's created a new mesh and, and it's going to, you're going to use this mesh in order to um, project the normals, this mesh is actually going to become the cage so uh, what I like to do is add a uh, bright color to this cage so it's more distinctive to the rest of the um, to the rest of the um, scene here and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly go around and uh, make sure that this um, cage encompasses the um, encompasses the uh, whole uh, high poly mesh. Now, a word of warning is you don't want to change it all to the topology in any way. If you do that, then uh, this won't work, and you'll get an error message um, when you go back to re-import this cage back into the uh, model or back into the projection modifier. Should I say? So let's see, just pushing these out and we need to pull these over here and the other, only the real um, area we need to change is where the ears is. Obviously like I said that's because I didn't really model the ears so I'm just going to click grow. And what I'm going to do is just click this option that says ignore back facing so I can just start getting a selection of vertexes here. Or we could even use a soft selection if you'd like, you know, to uh, pull these out. But I'm just going to do it like this for now. So we've done that side, and uh, we need to do over here, obviously. So. Let's pull these out.
Let's see. I think we're almost done it. So, bit of a silence there, but that was just while we get all this done. So, once that's done, what we want to do is we want to go back to uh, our low poly model. So, I'm going to press H again, go down to low, just like that. And we want to choose this option here that says uh, import. And what this is going to do, it's going to use this uh, cage mesh here to uh, reproduce the uh, blue cage. Choose pick. So I don't know if you've seen that then, but uh, this um, blue cage popped into the place that the um, orange, the um, green mesh was then. So, alright. So once that's done, we need to place a light in the scene. So we're going to, I'm going to place a uh, skylight here, and this is because it's going to cast light rays from uh, all directions. So long as that there's nothing there, that's going to be blocking their shadows. But with that also um, in there, the uh, skylight, we also need to add a light tracer. So I'm just going to add the light tracer and uh, close this out, it's no longer needed. Alright, so now it's time to bake the uh, low poly model here. So I'm going to select that, I'm going to go to rendering and uh, render to texture. I'm just going to bring up this dialog. So, what we need to do is we need to go down to this option where it says uh, projection mapping. I'm going to choose enable and then click pick. I know what to choose the uh, high poly model here. Now, you'll notice that this cage may uh, pop out of place like it did here. That's easy fix. We just have to unhide our, um, our projection model here and click import again and then we can select this cage and you see it pops back into place and we can hide that and then reselect our uh, low poly model next thing we need to make sure is that under objects and sub objects it's got set to uh, an existing UV channel obviously that's if you have unwrapped this if not you can choose automatic unwrap and, uh, and uh, see how that turns out for you so, okay, so the next thing we need to do, we need to add, and we need to add a normal map. So we're going to choose add elements. And then we need to choose an output folder. So I'm just going to overwrite this one that I had uh, already baked out beforehand. So once that's done, we can choose uh, render. Choose uh, continue. And we're going to get this now. What we're looking for on this is any red areas. If you have any red areas um, on the model, or I should say on this um, render output, this means that your cage is intersecting the um, the high poly model, and you just need to uh, move that cage away from it, just like we was doing for like by moving the um, the cage uh, away from the ears and the nose and stuff. So this was set to a low resolution. Um, I'm going to set this to a uh, high resolution here. So I'm going to set this to uh, 2048 and I'm going to click setup and I want a high quality uh, render here so I'm going to go down to um, renderer. I'm going to choose uh, enable global super sampling and I'm just going to uncheck object and image motion blur. We can uh, also increase the padding if you need to increase the padding. This is just going to be the amount of pixels uh, away from the render that's um, that's going to uh, get like a, a sort of a bleeding effect. So, right, so I'm going to choose render now. This may take a, a few moments because of the uh, quality of the um, normal map. So uh, just bear with me and. Uh, 
we'll uh, set this up with a uh, real-time shader. Um, in this particular case, I'm going to be using the Exolio shader. I know that's going to allow us to see uh, the normal map uh, in real time here. So. This technique is also good for if you just want to take this base texture out here that's getting and start to paint on it if you no longer have any um, if you don't already have a, um, a base for painting your textures. But this is also exactly the same process you would use to also create things like an, an ambient occlusion or a, a depth map or stuff like that. Instead of just choose, instead of choosing a normal map from uh, that list of menu, the list of things that come up when we choose to add elements, you would just choose uh, another map, or you could choose more than one map at the same time, and uh, it would bake out all those um, maps for you. So we've done that. I'm going to delete this light here, and I'm going to hide this high poly mesh. Alright, so we've done that. Let's set uh, up a shader here. So let's see. I'm going to set up the. Um, it's going to be a DirectX 10 shader. And uh, it's going to be the uh, Azolio shader, like I said. So I'm going to use uh, Discard. Let's see. Let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Shaders, here we go. So I'm going to simply just apply this like so. And uh, before we go uh, any further, I'm going to add some lights. So I'm just going to add uh, two basic lights there. Actually, this one's uh, orange, so I'll put this on this side. Uh, and uh, I'm going to move this one over here and uh, set this to 1 maybe give this a, a bluish effect here and the reason I, admitted, I did that is because inside the shader you have to set up the uh, light positions here so I'm going to set up light position 2 has to be position 1 and uh, position 1 to be 2 and uh, so far Move these up, I suppose. Um, I need to also set the active lights to two, set to one, so the second light position doesn't really uh, matter here. So I'm just going to turn off the uh, wireframe, so we can see what we're doing, and I'm going to go down to uh, normal map. I'm going to enable that, and you'll see that it's kind of going to go grey here. So I'm going to click none and choose a normal map. And you'll see that it kind of looks all messed up at the moment. And the yeah, reason for that is we need to check this option that says uh, flip green. Uncheck that. And now you can see that it's now popped into place and we can see all the uh, fine detail. We can further just uh, exaggerate that, for instance, by turning on a uh, Fresnel reflection and uh, maybe bringing the power down. Oops, I mean up, sorry. Just to um, just to get a, a defined look here. So uh, yeah, so that's what the normal map would look like on sat on this low poly model. Um, we could continue to actually add lights as well if we wish to around the back. For instance, uh, we'll just quickly do that, and then uh, we'll uh, call this video finished. So. I hope that this uh, hope that this tutorial's helped, and uh, I'll uh, hopefully see you soon on a uh, on a 